Have you ever wondered how to shut down your pet robot after it gains sentience? The obvious answer is to cut the power cable. But what if your robot doesn't have a power cable? What if it's battery operated? In those situations, you need something a little bit more, like an emergency stop button. In this video, I'll show you how to install and wire up these beautiful plastic red mushroom domes to securely shut down your robot anytime it starts acting just a little erratically. When using emergency stop buttons, we want them to meet three safety conditions. Firstly, the emergency stop button should not carry all the current. The emergency stop button should only cut power to the actuators, but not the control system. And resetting the emergency stop button should not power up the actuators immediately without additional authorization. If we consider the light switch example, all three of these conditions were violated. The power travels directly through the emergency stop button, the emergency stop button cuts power to both the actuators and the controller, and the actuators are going to begin moving immediately without additional authorization from the operator. Admittedly, we could resolve the second issue by moving the switch between the controller and the motors. That way the controller can still be powered even when the switch is open, but the first and third safety conditions are still being violated. To resolve this, we're going to use relays that are triggered by the emergency stop button. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you already have some familiarity with relays and how they operate, but as a quick recap, our 5-pin relays include one pin for the signal, two output pins, one normally opened and one normally closed, a magnetic switch that toggles between the two outputs, and a solenoid that controls the switch's position. When unpowered, the switch connects to the normally closed pin, and when the solenoid's powered up, it flips to the normally open position. And this is exactly what I did for my first control board. I had one relay for each of the three motors, with all three relays wired to the emergency stop button. When triggered, the relays would break the connection to the actuators. But if you look at my new PCB, you'll see each motor now has two relays. Why is that? To answer that, we have to take a closer look at the emergency stop button. Generally speaking, the emergency stop button comes with two switches. You'll see both these pieces on mine say NC, meaning they're normally closed switches. These two screw terminals are normally connected, but then when the emergency stop button is pressed, they open up. You can also buy normally open emergency stop buttons, which act in the inverse. Normally the switch is open and closed when the emergency stop button is engaged. Finally, you can also have normally open, normally closed emergency stop buttons, which have one of each type of switch. But what type of emergency stop button should you be using? If I was to make a tier list, this is what it would look like. My first PCB only used a normally closed emergency stop button. And while this worked well, there is an edge case where it may fail. If there was a short connection across the terminals, then the emergency stop button would no longer trigger the relay, since there's another path for the electricity to flow, keeping the solenoid powered. Okay, so maybe normally closed switches aren't the safest. Let's try with a normally open one. I'll wire it up with a slightly different relay configuration. And sure enough, it works when the emergency stop button's hit. In the event of a short circuit, it fails in a safe manner. That is to say, it cuts power to the motor. This looks good. However, if there's a break in the connection, then the switch will fail in an unsafe way as the motor can still run even when the buttons hit. So in summary, the normally closed and normally open switches have opposite failure modes. A normally closed switch will fail in a safe manner if there's a loose connection, but will fail in an unsafe manner if there's a short connection, and vice versa for a normally open switch. That's why, for the most robust implementation of an emergency stop button, you should use one that has both normally closed and normally open modes, such as this emergency stop button. By chaining two relays in series, one for normally closed and one for normally open, we can significantly reduce the risk of failure. This setup will only fail in the highly improbable case where there's a simultaneous short circuit and broken connection. That's why I'm replacing the old normally closed relay board with this new PCB, which includes two relays per motor channel. So implementing this functionality, we still need a master on-off switch for the entire robot. Uh, this switch here, 
is going to be wired directly to this 30 amp relay. So if I throw this switch, I can turn on the robot. If I throw it, I turn it off. This then runs into this fuse box. And on the fuse box, I'm going to stick in three different 7.5 amp fuses. Uh, so that's one fuse for each of the motors. And then one 3 amp fuse. And this one's going to be used for the logic level processing on the robot. We can get, now go ahead and add in the relay block that's going to be triggered by the emergency stop button cutting power to the actuators. If you saw the previous video in this series, you might recognize this wiring harness as the controller that I was using to drive the robot in a square. I'm going to repurpose this and put it back on here, this time with the emergency stop. So this is going to be a little bit of a trial by fire. I've got a very short runway and I've programmed the Arduino to drive the robot forwards in that direction. I have one master on power switch and the emergency stop button that we want to test before it gets to the end of the end of the runway. I'd call that a pretty good success. All right, so with this, we've met the first and second of our safety requirements. But the final requirement states that resetting the emergency stop button should not power up the actuators immediately without additional authorization. This means we need some way for the controller to know when the emergency stop button has been hit. If it was hit, update the motors to stop and don't start them back up until external authorization has been given by the operator. In a subsequent video, we'll look at how this external authorization can be given over Bluetooth using a button press on a remote such as this Xbox controller. But for the moment, we'll just focus on how to monitor the state of the emergency stop button. To do this, I have a set of three additional pins on the PCB. One for ground, and two pins for measuring which high-low state the normally open and normally closed switches are in. I connected these wires to digital pins 2 and 3 on the Arduino Nano. I then have two demo scripts up on GitHub that you can look at. The first uses the Timer 1 protocol to poll the button states at a frequency of 20 Hz. The second script uses the interrupt service routine to trigger an event anytime the states change and shuts down the motors whenever the button is hit. At the moment, there's no external authorization implemented, but we've laid the foundations for future videos when we can come back and look at doing this with the Xbox controller. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.